Welcome to the Neptune RTP tutorial video. We're going to walk you through a series of steps to get set up with your Neptune RTP. And we're going to start with downloads and installation. When you click the Neptune RTP link on the website, you'll notice there's a Windows and a Mac version available for download. We're going to download the Windows version. Keep in mind that we are saving a compressed zip archive, so we're going to need to take the Neptune RTP EXE out of the zip file in order to run it. If this is your first time installing Neptune RTP, you'll also want to get the drivers and download them as well by going to Downloads, Drivers, and checking your platform. Windows has the auto driver installer, which you can also save to the desktop to run later. Now that we have our drivers saved, let's go ahead and double click the driver installer and run it. No matter what version of Windows you're on, this little window will pop up and tell you that it's installing the driver. And when it's done, it'll go ahead and close itself. Now we're going to go ahead and double click the zip archive and we're going to create a new folder for Neptune RTP. Once you have your new folder created, we're actually going to drag Neptune RTP.exe into the new folder and have it copy. Now your copy of Neptune RTP is installed and you can clean up any extra files that you no longer need. Let's go ahead and run Neptune RTP for the first time. Double click the Neptune RTP icon. You'll be prompted with an end user license agreement. Once the software has fully opened, you can expand the window and move it around anywhere you want on the screen. You can also move and change your parameters and peripheral windows as well. The data and gauge window can be placed anywhere within the MDI window. Set up the layout to your liking. Now we'll be able to add stuff to the gauge window, but I'll cover that later. We've taken a different approach for the status window this time around. The status window floats above all the other windows and auto expands when you go over the status icon. Now if you want the status window to stay open, simply click the status itself and then it'll be locked in even next time you launch the software. If you click status again, it'll go back to auto expanding. This setup really saves space when you need it. Now let's take a look at some key preferences that you might want to have on. If you like to have the latest software, make sure check for new versions at launch is checked. We also like to recommend that Auto Connect is turned on, as well as start logging at Connect. This should make everything seamless when you plug your unit in. Anytime you make these type of changes, Clicking OK will save those changes and apply them to the software without a restart. Let's take a look at the gauge window. You can see that we have some gauges here by default, and right-clicking will allow you to add gauges or lights. Right-clicking again will let you set the type that you want to see in that particular gauge, and the same thing is applied for lights.
Once the gauge or light is on screen, you can change the type at any time. Our parameters window is where you'll find all the settings for things like rev limit and boost control and even two-step. We'll need a tune open to see these functions, so let's go ahead and create a new base map. We can create a new base map by new in the file menu or the new button on the toolbar. If you're connected to the internet, you'll find a series of tuner and user contributed files right in the list. If none of the contributed files suit your needs, go ahead and select Neptune Base and click the next button to get started. We make it easy to set up everything from this point. You can go ahead and choose your map sensor. You can set up your injectors and even rescale for boost right from the base map creator. When you choose a new injector size, it'll even ask you to calculate the trim for cranking and TPS tip-in. We're going to go ahead and set up this map for a boosted application. Rescaling for boost allows you to choose a PSI increment or an N PSI for the table, as well as retard per PSI. And lastly, you want to make sure that you have the right transmission selected for your application. If it's not in the list and you need to create a custom one, you can do that from the tools menu later. When you hit next again, you'll be able to choose the settings that are enabled on your ECU. You'll see here a list of ECU types, what market it's from, whether or not VTEC is enabled, and some of the sensors that are disabled for that ECU. For this test run, we're just going to choose a P30 so everything is enabled. Once you hit next again, you actually get to choose the stock maps from the ECU that you want to work with. So we're going to choose P30 again for B16. And once you hit next again, it'll open a brand new window with all of our settings applied that we put into the base map creator. Once you move the main tuning window to a position that you find comfortable, you can then go and check the parameters for all of your settings. You'll notice now every option is populated. And you have the option of changing any one of these that you need before uploading your original base map. If you're like me, you'll probably want to see your positive pressure in something other than millibar. You can find this in Preferences under the Units tab. And right now I'm going to change to PSI. When you hit OK, you'll notice this is applied, and now your maps read in PSI for positive pressure. In our tuning window, we can change between the table view and a 2D or 3D view, as well as having both on screen at the same time. In order to do a side-by-side, -side, you can use the dots on the left to drag between the 2D and table views. And to switch back to a full table view or a 2D or 3D view, simply click the graph button in the toolbar. Now that we have all of our windows set up, let's go ahead and connect our unit for the first time. Plug your unit into USB now. If you've enabled Auto Connect and Preferences, it may take a couple seconds for the USB drivers to load. Once they do, you'll see a window pop up asking you to set this unit up for Neptune. Because these are set up by Moats factory default, you'll need to click Yes to set this unit up for Neptune. 
It will take just a second to set up and then the software will disconnect from the unit. Now you can unplug it and plug it back in or you can go to connect and connect USB. Now the unit needs to go through the registration process. You must be on the internet for this and when you click yes it will automatically look up your software key. And if you chose start logging at connect you'll see that we are now logging default values. Once you're at this point all you need to do is simply go back into the toolbar and choose upload base code to put your base map onto the ECU for the first time. Now this can be done with the key off or key on in the vehicle and it should kick the ECU into a mode where you start data logging real time values immediately. I'm on an engine simulator so you'll see the MAL kick on with error codes almost immediately. To check error codes simply go back to the toolbar and choose the error codes button. A window will open showing you the errors that are currently present in the ECU. I want to disable these error codes, so let's start with VTEC pressure by going to the VTEC tab in parameters. If you have a non VTEC ECU, you could disable VTEC altogether, but for this, we're going to actually just disable the VTEC pressure switch code. Going down the list, I'm going to want to disable the idle air control valve. And after that, you can see all of our other options are located on the Options tab in Parameters. Now we want to make sure our changes are being applied in real time, so we'll go into the Emulator menu and make sure Live Update is checked. As an alternative, you can choose Update Changes from the Emulator menu to upload any changes that you've made. At this point, we need to clear the error codes, so we're going to click Clear, which I only recommend doing with the vehicle off and with the key in the on position. You'll notice that the codes have all been disabled and the check engine light is no longer on. At this point, with Live Update enabled, your fuel and ignition, as well as any settings you change in parameters, are done in real time. Let's get set up to log O2 sensor readings. In parameters, under the logging tab, you'll find everything you need to get set up for wideband logging. We need gas type, maximum air fuel ratio, and your minimums to get started with the logging process. Once you choose the input that you're receiving your data on from the wideband input list, you can go ahead and create a new wideband or select one of the pre-done ones that match your wideband's output. I created a new wideband and I'm going to call it my wideband. Then in the voltage list, I'm going to add two new breakpoints. Let's use a PLX as an example. 0 volts is 10 and 5 volts is 20. Your wideband may be different or may be settable, but be sure to enter the values that apply to your wideband. You can see that immediately the input that we've chosen starts showing the wideband value. There's also an option so you can color the gauge based on the O2 value. By switching into Lambda mode with the Lambda icon on the toolbar, you can see all of your traced and recorded cells wideband values. I'm going to adjust the O2 voltage now so you can see how this works. I'm also going to trace through the RPM and map range. For doing percentage difference, you can choose target air fuel from the tools menu. You'll notice these are all 10 by default, 
but if you choose your sections and use control up and down, you can change this to your target values. These values are used to calculate the difference between your target and the actual wideband values logged anywhere on the table. Then if we use the percentage icon on the toolbar, you'll see the percentage difference from your target and the actual recorded wideband value. This will give you a great reference to start adjusting your fuel maps to reach your target. After you've made your adjustments, choose Clear from the Edit menu to clear all wideband logged values. And as always guys, happy tuning! We really hope that you enjoy your Neptune RTP. Don't forget to log on to the support forum or email us if you have any issues. Thanks for watching.